Here's a problem someone's having. Um, this person says, I'm having trouble painting the bark on tree trunks. After defining the bark, it always looks artificial. Do you have a solution for this? I have two or three. So one thing you can always count on, whether it's bark on trees or whether it's anything else, and that is what's in shadow and what's not in shadow is going to determine how you create the texture. A bark is texture, just like leaves on the ground uh, are texture. Blades of grass or a field of grass is texture. So many things are tiny, tiny little shapes that create texture and how you create that texture or the value contrast that you use to create that texture is going to determine whether it's going to be um, whether it's going to look realistic or whether it's going to look artificial like this person uh, said. Now that's the first thing. The second thing is this. If you're close to the tree trunk you will see more texture. If you are further away from the tree trunk you might not see any texture at all. So if you're painting tree trunks that are in the distance and you're putting bark on them, they look artificial because when things are in the distance, especially in the distant distance, all the texture goes away. So texture progresses as it goes into distance. It's very sharp right up close to us, but anything that is textured, like the things I named earlier, as they move in the distance they become less and less texture and after a while you don't see any texture at all. So that's the second thing. The third thing is this, that when something is close to you, close enough so that you can see the texture, so we're standing pretty close to this tree trunk right here, you don't see the texture the same all the way across. You see the texture more pronounced, more clear or clearer right in the area where it goes into shadow, where the tree trunk goes into shadow, and where it goes into light. Now, we studied, uh, well, we studied in our, in our uh, full-length courses, and I think I probably have, have, have brought this out in Quick Tips, I'm not sure, but that's called the Terminator line. It's a good thing to know, because whenever there is a direct light, you're going to have that. It, wherever you have shadow on any image, you're going to have a terminated line. So, and that terminated line is always that area. It, it's not a distinct line, it's an area. It's always that area where light meets shadow, and that's where you will see texture more distinctive, clearer. So you see there are two or three things to take into consideration here. I'm going to do a very quick little illustration here just to show you uh, what I mean about it be the texture being more clearly defined at the terminator area it gets less defined as it goes into shadow and in, in many cases it will get somewhat less defined as it goes into light but what happens in light the contrast decreases so let's do just a very quick little I'm not going to do the whole tree trunk I'm just going to do a little section very quickly here and so let's just say right here um, we would we would identify one side of the tree trunk and sort of right here, the other. And you would use the, use, the, use the same process of observation all the way through. All right, step one for any, for anything, in fact, for, for um, painting anything, step one is, for me it is, identifying where the shadow is and where the shadow begins, or where it's not in shadow any longer. Well, this is about half and half. So we have about half, for that tree trunk that's in shadow and I'm just going to kind of rough that in as this is in shadow. I'm just kind of rough that in here and you can see that uh, and we're not doing texture first. You don't start out doing texture first. You, you get the value and the, the value differences in first as an underpainting else the texture is going to look artificial. So, um, so we get that, there's, there's the in shadow, and then as it makes that transition right in here, if you squint, this is a narrow, error, a narrow area right in there, in that terminator area where it is almost, uh, a value of, almost a value of 5. And so that would be about right in here. So we do that next, 
about right in there and maybe maybe a, it, it begins to get a little bit lighter as it moves in this direction but this is that that transition area it seems to be a little bit darker than I wanted to make it there you go now then on the on the side where the the light is hitting uh, the side that's not in shadow you see it much lighter so we'll go over here into the area of light and check the value pretty much the same value right here let's get that just a little bit lighter all right so we can save right in here there we go that's the area that's in not in shadows it's coming off as being uh, the, the general area is coming off as being pretty much this value right here now the first thing I'm going to do is to create a gradation because we don't see we don't see that exact line so the first thing we can do is create a gradation of, um, of this this terminator area moving into the um, areas hit by light and then we can make another gradation on this side and pull all the paint out of the brush I'll make another gradation on this side and very quickly come down and there we go there now we've got it set uh, we can see the shadow side and we can see the light side now take a look when you look at the bark on the shadow side and you quit looking at it as bark you look at it as value value or shapes of value you barely see any value difference there's a very very close value uh, contrast there so what I'll do is go into that deeper the, the darkest value of that color and I'm going to make it even deeper by adding a little bit of the ultramarine blue this is the raw umber I'm working with here it's, it, except for value uh, I'm not looking at color I'm just value now if I watch if I make little areas that are in the same value range right here in the same value range just as air just as lines of of dark that that have a little bit of contrast it's just a very very close contrast then I have pretty much represented uh, if I continue that I could continue the whole thing I'm not going to do it in this in this demonstration because I want you to see I want you to see how this works now uh, what happens here as it moves into the terminator line the dark part of that remains the same value but the lighter part of being a lighter value you begin to get more value contrast so I can use that same dark value as I come in here and begin to sort of define that area or those areas of of the indentions of the bark it is its shadows created because of those shapes of bark that are um, blocking it from light are blocking the look blocking the tree from light the little shapes of bark there so we could do that come them down like this um could do a little bit of here 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 now I'm going to keep this sort of cartoonish to start with now you see we got we have a little bit greater contrast but notice as it moves into light that dark gets lighter and that's where you need to uh, pay close attention there are only a few areas as it moves in only a few areas that maintain or retain that dark is dark and that's only where the bark is leaning way out and causing the whole thing to go in shadow so what I'm going to do here is to move into this value in this middle value right here let's get that just a little bit darker so we have we have a subtle there we go maybe maybe that's a little dark let's see if we can make it a little bit lighter so you get a closer you get a closer value contrast when you're creating things like bark and things that are round that have texture on them you get a closer value contrast where it's in the brighter light and you get a um, a fuller contrast let me go in there now and, and, and create create that full of contrast right here because you have the dark and then right next to the dark you'll have the light and I scooted over into that one but right next to the dark you have where you have those areas of the bark that that uh, lean forward and pick up light so this right this area right in here is the is where you see the stronger contrast of light and uh, light and dark 
in that terminator area. Then the contrast narrows again as it goes into light, and only in some areas of the light, uh, uh, where it's in light, only in some areas do you see it darker. But you don't want to make the whole thing, uh, don't want to make the whole area darker, just a little bit. Now this is very cartoonish, but it gives you the principle of uh, when you're when you're working bark or any texture, it gives you the principle of how that value of contrast works. So just keep in mind, you you get you establish your value first, how it moves into shadow or moves away from shadow into light or into not in shadow, and that area that's when that within that terminator. There's where your greatest contrast is. You start out, usually that area in the terminator is about a middle value, uh, plus or minus, in that general area there. And you can use the darks as dark as you've used them over here, and you can use the lights to highlight those darks. As you see them right here, you can use those as light as you would go over here. And then use your observation. Use that general principle, but don't try to follow it as a formula. Just look for it. This is this is to tell you what to look for, not how to do it. So if you uh, go out in nature where you have trees that have bark on them and study study this principle, study what's happening there, especially where there is light shining on it, and I think you can see that by following that principle, that general principle I just outlined for you, of shadow to night and shadow, and the value being uh, the the dark darks being very narrow in contrast in shadow, the lights being very narrow in contrast in not in shadow, and your greatest contrast happening in that terminator area. I believe if you use that principle, you will be able to use uh, to create trees that have realistic bark, and you'll be able to create all kinds of textures that look realistic. Hope you enjoyed this quick tip. If you have questions or a suggestion for a quick tip, leave us a comment right down here in the YouTube comment box. And take a trip over to dyingminds.com and look at all the things we have there for you, including full-length video tutorials. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter so you'll always be informed of our latest adventures. Thanks for watching.